So the two things that we are going to do in this video is to make sure that our bar can't exceed its uh, upper limit and it can't go below zero. And of course, we also need to add some functionality so that it doesn't have these uh, chunky movements as it has right now. So um, first of all, let's fix the limits. So the limits are decided from within the script called stats. So let's go to the stat script. Right here inside the stat script uh, under the current value, we are actually setting the current value right here. And we can actually use a clamp function to make sure that it doesn't go uh, below zero and above the max value. So to do so, we will simply have to say math f dot clamp. And so you need to clamp the value from zero to max value. Um, max value here with capital M. And again, it's very important that you use the right v values here. You need to use value so that's blue here with non capital V and max value with capital M so that it changes this value down here. So basically, now we have clamped our current value so it shouldn't be able to go below zero or above max value. So let's try to run the game now and see what happens if I press W to go up. Nothing happens, it can't go above 100. I can go down to zero, but I still can't go above 100. Okay, so that was how to claim the value. The next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that we are looping our bar back and forth. So let's find our bar script. And inside handlebar, we'll have to use math.lerp to lerp it. Lerp will move it from one position to the other over as a time. So basically, we will also have to set a speed so that we know how fast it should lerp from position to position. So in the top here, <coughs> sorry, make a private uh, float called lerp speed. And we serialize this one so that we can decide how fast each bar needs to, to, to lerp. So when we have that float, we can go to our script select the bar, see the lerp speed and maybe set it to two or something. That's our standard speed for now. When we have added the lerp speed, we can go back to script and roll down to our handle bar function because down here we'll have to make use of that new lerp speed we just created. So we can say in math f dot lerp to lerp it from one position to another. And we need to lerp it from the constant dot fill amount, which is the current uh, position to the new fill amount here. And we need to lerp it over a time, a set time with a speed. So we are going to say time dot delta time multiplied by our lerp speed here. So if we save this, jump back to Unity and play the game, then we'll see if we press the W button uh, the Q button for me, sorry, it will lerp from position to position here, as you can see. So now it looks like a very, very smooth um, movement when you lose health and when you gain health. And you can, of course, always change the speed here to a lower value. For example, let's try 0 0.5. Then you'll see it goes, should be going slower now, as you can see here, before it gets to its, its end point here. But you can, of course, change that yourself if if you want to. Um, if you put a very low value, it is going to take a lot of time for it to get to get to the end here. So yeah, I, I recommend that you have like two or, or higher. Um, what else? We should also be adding some other bars because right now we have our health. And actually, maybe I want to make my health bar a little red. So if I select my content here and make it red instead, Looks a little better, it fits with the heart, I think, like so. And then I would also like to add another bar, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to add another bar to this. Basically, you can take your health bar, right-click on it, and duplicate it, and rename it to energy bar. And then you can take open the energy bar, select the icon, and then select sprite, and then select the new sprite for that. And you can set the native size here, and then you can scale it down so it has the right proportions and everything. Maybe a little up. 
and then you can take this energy bar select your move tool and move it down so the energy bar needs to have another name um, or another text on it so open the mask take value text and write energy colon and my energy bar is going to have another color so I select the energy bar um, oh, sorry the content here and I change it to some blue color like so and there I have an energy bar the next thing I need to do is to make sure the player has energy as a stat so I open up my player and I make a private stat called energy and I sterilize my field then I go to my awake and say energy dot initialize and down here in update I can copy and paste this so make sure that I can update my energy so I can say energy dot current value um, minus equals 10 if I press the A button and if I press the S button I can add 10 to the energy so basically it's the same as here I simply just add to the energy current value instead on A and S and save this back in unity I will simply have to select my player open up the energy take the energy bar drag it to here say that my max value is 230 for example and my current value is 80 when I start for example so if we do so you see that our energy bar has 80 and I can increase it on S so that it goes to 230 and I can decrease it on D so that it goes down so that's how easy you can add another bar to your your game and of course you can add something so it recharges energy all the time um, yes the last thing I would like to do is to add the shield to the game so to add the shield I will have to do the exact same thing as I did with the energy bar so just right click on energy duplicate it rename to shield bar and then open it up take the color and uh, content color I'm going to make mine a little green green color I don't know which green I want like, like so I guess and then I'm going to take my shield bar and move it down so it's down here and I'm going to change the icon click on the icon <clears throat> select the icon and take the shield set native size and then select the rig tool and scale it down so it has the right size the right portions and then rename the value text to shield <clears throat> and the exact same way as before we go to our player we say he has a shield so we make a private stat called shield we take the serialized field copy and paste it so it's serialized we go down here and then we can copy paste it and make sure we use um, uh, what should we use uh, C and X and X to move this and we need to take our shield that current value and shield that current value not short sure. shield there we go <clears throat> so now we have a shield that works as well so if you we jump back out here select our player open up the shield tell him that he's using the shield bar the maximum shield is 100 and the current value is 100 play the game now see that the shield bar is not working because I forgot to do something because I <coughs> sorry I forgot to initialize my shield so I need to jump back into the script and write shield dot initialize here when I have initialized my shield everything should be working so I could jump back here and play my game and then I should be able to reduce it on C and increase it on X here as you can see so now I have a working shield pass well so um, as you saw in the tutorial or in the intro of the tutorial I was able to change the colors on my one of my bars so uh, how much time is here it's almost 10 minutes so I guess I'm going to make another video and in that video I'm going to show you how you can change the color on the bar dependent on the value that it's monitoring so thanks for watching this video and sticking with the series um,
Again, um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it. Also, um, remember that Inscope Studios is a community-founded page, so if you haven't done it already and you would like to support me, then please um, consider supporting me either on Patreon or by going to the link in the bottom of the screen where you can acquire one of my projects. If you go to Patreon, you will be able to get all my projects that I've ever made, so you can just go there and download everything, um, and you can also get private tutoring and other stuff. So. Thanks for watching and I hope you will look at the next video where you can see how to change some colors.